Hey guys, I'm Riz Grester, and how about we react to Ruby, Volume 4, Chapter 5, Menagerie. Of course, I'm not going to include the actual video in this video, so if you would like to sync it up, like follow along with me, which I suggest you do, uh, make sure to click here. It will take you to the video, and I will provide a timestamp in this bottom corner so you can sync it up, and yeah, do that. It'll be great. And before we move on, a quick shout out to Majora. So Majora, thank you for supporting me on Patreon. So last time, family, I'll admit that, I mean, as I said in that video, um, I was rather disappointed because I was really looking forward to seeing the whole, like, Yang subplot with her arm and getting over that trauma and everything, and I didn't like how they approached it, and, um, I don't exactly love how quickly they seem to be moving through it either, so it's just kind of a double bad whammy for me, and I'm hoping that over time, as we get to see, as I get, to, I get to see, yeah, um, specifically, um, the plot progress and the Yang you know, kind of subplot move along further. I'm hoping that the development will make me feel better about it, that will amount to something better than I'm currently picturing, that it won't feel rushed or sloppy or like things wouldn't have happened. Because, you know, I get that, you know, Yang, like I like I mentioned, I think I talked about all this in the last video, but I get that Yang and her dad probably have the same kind of sense of humor, because, you know, who else do you get it from, right? That sort of deal. And, um, and I get that you, you kind of test the waters with jokes and remarks and whatnot and see what's comfortable and what's not. So, you know, there's that kind of thing. However, I don't think that he should have felt that that was even worth risking at that point in time. And I definitely don't think that Yang should have laughed about it. And if she felt badly about it afterward, like if she was only pretending so that everyone felt okay, so they didn't feel bad for her, then we should have seen a scene later on where she's alone or something or she confides in someone and we could just tell that she is still upset about it because her waking up from a nightmare about it going downstairs then having her dad joke about something like that that doesn't work for me it just doesn't i mean and if they had played it out differently i might have been like oh yang is just tough and with her father you know they're moving on they're moving past it but again right you know waking up right away from that dream and then all throughout this volume every time we've seen yang she has been stressed about that one thing that trauma has been affecting her and so they've had it affecting her every time we've seen her so far in this volume and then suddenly a joke is made about it and it's okay with her like no they just had a bad build-up if they're going to have that kind of thing happen now again if they had it build up a different way with her I don't know exactly but if they had it built up a different way it would have been okay but the way it was it didn't work for me for those of you though because there are a lot of people in the comments who are trying to like make me feel better about it or trying to give me all these justifications and everything I'm glad that you're okay with it but even with all the justifications because I feel like I shot down at least in my mind most of those in that last video it didn't work for me so yeah I probably spent a lot more time on that than I should have but I wanted to address that because that was the most important thing that happened for me last episode that was what hit me the most um, I think second most is coming to mind right now is the weird farm boy because um I don't know, one of my thoughts that I don't think I talked about, but that I, I talked with my younger brother about after I watched the episode, was that maybe somehow Ozpin was the boy. I don't know if like spirit-wise or whatever, but um, it was just very odd. The whole scene was odd. Like, I, that's just another bit of speculation. There's the whole thing where, you know, maybe that's Ozpin's old place when he was a wizard. Or maybe the boy is Ozpin somehow. Or husband's visit. I don't know. It's just all up for speculation at this point. But, you know, it was an interesting thought. Anyway, so about this episode, it is titled Menagerie. And I think the thumbnail had Blake in it. So I'm pretty darn sure this is going to focus on Blake and her interactions with her family. I'm sure we're going to jump to other characters too, as we've been doing, um, I think every episode we've had multiple characters involved, like jumping from place to place. Um, but I'm pretty sure the focus of this one is going to be on Blake and her time in Menagerie Island. So... I don't have much else to say about that, it's just Blake with her family, right? Of course, something's gonna happen. Something has to happen, right? But, um, as for what is going to happen, I have no idea. And we can't know until we watch it! So with that, let's get to watching! Alright, here's how it's going to work. I'm going to say 3, 2, 1, play, and when I say play, you hit play. Ready? Okay. So, 3, 2, 1, play. We got the intro and stuff, and I've already seen this. I'm gonna check my phone real quick. Nothing special. Okay. I mean, I don't have much to say at this point. I just don't want to skip it. Yeah.
Yeah, and of course we got Sun with Blake. I didn't mention that, but I think I saw her in the thumbnail too. So that that's a thing. But you know, like that that bit in the intro actually with Yang, you know, with Yang and her father, like practicing, I assume, sparring kind of thing. We didn't even see any of that happen, and so you can't use that to say like, oh, well, that's how he knows that she's okay with it. Because again, from everything we have seen, she's not okay with it. She wasn't okay with it, and she shouldn't be this quickly this early on. That sort of thing. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, it's a touch back on that again, right? After I spent like a couple of minutes earlier. Alright, Ruby. Here we go. Yep. It's a foghorn. Guess it's time for SpongeBob to wake up. I'm just thinking, it's Leif Erikson Day. Hing a dang a dargan. What? All well, the faunus? No, nah, there's a lot of faunus. Which is cool, you know, get more more representation for them, because all we've really seen so far is like Blake, Velvet, and then like the White Fang bad guys, right? <laughs> I mean, I'm sure we've seen dabbles here and there, but those have been the only with ones with real focus. It was about the founders, that was right. Hmm, that could be foreshadowing. <laughs> it's the one place. Did you not hear her? See? I was right. Oh, how? Though this part looks nice. And it's not like it being this crowded is... Honestly, it doesn't seem that crowded. It doesn't to me. I don't know. I guess to Monkey Man, yeah, but... Kokuana. Kuokuana. Okay. I'm gonna forget that, but I wanted to pronounce it. But it is pretty sweet. You live better than a lot of other people, from what I can see. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's that big one. <laughs> that was fun. I don't know exactly what that means yet, but uh, obviously it's important. Like her position. Or at least her family's? What are they called here? Is it a chieftain? Is it... Are they are they aware the, about the whole White Fang thing? I mean, because it wasn't White Fang wasn't always bad, right? So I mean, <laughs> hey you. Aww. Hug her back. Do it now. There you go. That's happy. Good. 
You'll never guess, dear. What I tell you. <laughs> it's nice seeing the emotion with their ears. Gotta point that out, you know? Agreed. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Poor son. You can hear him just digging his own. <laughs> <laughs> Again, the expressions are great. <laughs> Played it off nicely, son. Ooh, getting a little cougar action in that cat woman, huh? So why doesn't he have ears? I mean, I know not everyone does. I just kind of assume they all would. And I still wonder if they have double hearing. Whom? Oh. It's clever, Fennec, because Desert Vox. Uh oh. Just listen to their voices, they're clearly evil. I guess now we'll see. So there are m multiple branches of White Fang. Well, their voices are still evil. I was just picturing, that is why we brought you this fruit basket. Chieftain, yeah. Hey, I got the title right. Good and bad, yeah. That's not what it's about.
Yeah, her. <laughs> See, he, he picked up on the voices too. <laughs> Divided opinion between the parents. Yes. <laughs> Man, those two is cunning as a fox. Wolf in sheep's clothing. Yes. You're creepy, mister. Is that the end of the... Oh, it is the end of the episode. Oh, that's unfortunate. Alright. Hmm. Hmm. Well, I'll, I mean, I'll talk about it soon. I'm just waiting for the credits to be done. You know, You know how it is. All right, so the credits are done, and this one was about, let's see, real quick. It was 12 minutes and 12 seconds long, so now it's time to talk about it. Um, I, I am a little bit disappointed with the length of this one. I, I feel that it was a little short, but um, I'm not nearly as, like, disappointed with it as I was in, like, Volume 1 and that kind of thing. Like, it wasn't that bad, and it did set up a lot of good stuff. Um, I just feel like it should have covered a little bit more ground, because all it really did, Blake and Son arrived at Menagerie, they talked about Menagerie a bit, they walked through it, they met Blake's parents, and, you know, like, over the course of a meal, and then they had that door thing, and then we get to see Crazy Guy. Um, so, it can be summed up, like, really, really quickly. And uh, there wasn't a lot of moving around. It actually didn't jump to really multiple perspectives, unless you count again the crazy guy at the end, but I don't so much. So yeah, um, I wish that this one were longer and had more content and just involved kind of more stuff. But for what it did involve, I did enjoy. Like, I did really like, um, you know, what we got to see, um, you know, as far as Menagerie goes, as far as Blake's family goes, and her relationship with them, and I think the, the interactions with them, you know, Blake and Son and the parents were funny. Um, and so I appreciated all of that. And of course, we do get to see now that the White Fang are still, you know, mobilized and everything. That I don't know if there are actually multiple branches. I assume that there are, but, you know, clearly those two were lying and they have evil voices. So, yeah, I mean, that's a thing. Um, but I guess that we just can't stop worrying about them at this point. I mean, the White Fang, I wasn't done worrying about them, but I thought maybe they'd lie low for a little bit longer. But it seems they're already on the move and stuff, so... That's good, especially considering, uh, you know, Blake's parents don't seem, um... Like, they don't seem convinced by Blake and Son so much. I mean, he was willing to listen to her, which I was glad. I was gonna be upset if right when his daughter came back, he just completely ignored, you know, her warnings and everything. But it doesn't seem like he's ready to blame the White Fang. And I don't even know if he's going to look too much into the situation. He said that he would review, like, the board meetings and everything. Um, but I don't know. I mean, those could, e those could be forged and all that, too. So I think the only way that he could really learn the truth is if he reached out to other leaders, you know, in the different branches. And it didn't seem like he was going to do that. Especially if he's so out of the loop that he didn't know the White Fang was involved in the Veil Fall at all. Especially considering this is months after the event, isn't it? So, uh, I don't think that he's going to be of much help, at least immediately. You know, probably a little in time, but, um, right now, no. There's not a lot else to talk about. Again, I thought... The interactions were funny. I thought that Son was funny, you know, trying to, you know, dig himself out of the hole, but he kept going further into it, you know, like talking to her father um, while Blake talked with her mom. Um, and I thought that Son's just, you know, his shock at learning that Blake was the chieftain's daughter, you know, and living in that big old place, and just him enjoying Menagerie. And again, I liked seeing Menagerie and all the different faunas, the different representations that, you know, could exist. Um, it was all nice. So like I said, the content that was there, I enjoyed. I just wish that there were more. So yeah, let me know what you guys thought about this episode in the comments below, whether you liked it, whether you disliked it, what you thought about this or that, etc. and so on and so forth. 
and um, do not spoil things um, for me or for anyone else in the comments. I want to keep these videos spoiler free so you can talk about this episode or anything that happened in the past, but please do not talk about anything that happened in the future. It will make me upset. So, you don't want to make me upset, right? Anyway, with that, we're calling it here. Cue outro, go!